Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Tuesday, July 12th, 2022. Uh, I have updated the very, very near term uh, labeling. <clears throat> and starting here on the daily chart, uh, today's activity really kind of put a little bit more into place in terms that I do feel that this is the correct labeling and that this will have completed the minor third, <clears throat> and but we remain within the minor fourth wave. And yes, I did put the label of a C there because as a straight five wave up C, it broke too low before taking out that. It did not take out the high at 39.50, got close, 39.22, I believe. But still, it would end in a failure should the market actually continue to drop, drop below 37.44, and then start heading down towards 36.39. Now, what else could it be? Yep, there's always got to be a choice, right? So we're within that corrective phase. We could be in a triangle pattern. And that fits with the balance of the week and the fact we got these figures and how they're going to be interpreted and initially and so on and so forth as we continue on through to expiration. Um, I did say and discuss over the weekend how I felt that Apple Computer would eventually get itself closer, if not touch, 150. Got pretty dang close. Got up there again today. And um, so that provided a lot of oomph to the market and a lot of support for the market, actually, throughout the session here in the S&P, but also in the NASDAQ. So if it's a triangle pattern, then we would have A, B, C. This would be part of the D wave. We get a little bit more downside. D wave up, excuse me, an E wave up. So the D wave completes. We get an E wave up. It could pierce the top boundary or the top channel line. And it could get itself above 39.50 if it really wanted to get up to 39.68. Let's drop it down to the hourly and take a look. If we put in, here would be, we can put in a, a trend line or channel line right there. And if this is the D and the D comes down, maybe if this is one, two, three, that's a little four, five, maybe down 37.85 at the lowest. And then we turn and we rise again and we come up in an E wave. It, it can spike above, die, and then come and then just fly right back down. So in other words, it, the E wave can, it carries the potential where it could spike, get above the, the trend line or the channel line, complete turn in this case and just slide down. The result of the triangle pattern is that when it's completed, it normally will thrust out of the triangle, in this case, thrusting out downward. And that thrust is often the length of the triangle. And right now that would put us from 3639 up to 3950. So it would drop pretty big. Um, and if it was dropping from up here, it would be still expected to get itself above, below 36.39 eventually. So initially, I would expect that thrust to bring us down to 37.45-ish or even a little bit below that. Get us below this B wave at uh, 37.41. That would, I think, could be that initial thrust out of the triangle. Now, what if it truly is a failure? An 18 point failure, 28 point failure. Okay, I'll get there. And just continues to drop. Well, that would, it would not stop here to go form an E wave. That would be the first thing. So we'd be looking for it to break 3804, to then to break 3747, 3742, 36, and 36.39. Now, is it going to do that tomorrow? It would be a pretty big drop if it did. Uh, I've not seen one like that in the S&P in quite some time. Doesn't mean it can't happen. But I initially would think that it comes down and it can break 
42 in that area. And then we get a little bit of a rally. But then this gets left as a C and that four gets placed above it. When we start to break here, pretty much is giving me the clue that this, this is will be done. Now that's both sides, but the pattern and the look and the feel suggest that we we'll, are very likely going to see this triangle play out. So if I put that, there's the upper boundary, upper channel, and the lower channel should go to the B, and we could do it straight across. Or we could run it just a little bit like that. So we could run it flat like that. So we get this triangle pattern more towards the top, but you know, kind of like a declining. So this gives it more room if it decides to go up and could penetrate that here a little bit. It could spike above. I'm not looking for that but it could, and then just drops back down. So if we get an A, B, C, D, E, complete four, five wave, fifth wave takes over, okay? So again, right now, look at this. Look at this mishmash mess on the hourly chart, all of the moving averages collected together. You got the 50, you got the 20, you got the 200 EMA, 200 SMA, the four and the eight, all clustered between 38.52 and 38, what's that, 24. 38.25 to 38.52, in a 25 point range, so it's all the moving averages. I wonder who's gonna be bold enough to move it up out of that range. So for tomorrow, uh, I am gonna look for continuation of the development of this triangle pattern. Let's not forget, that also tomorrow is CPI. We have CPI tomorrow. On Thursday, we have jobless claims and PPI, which again will be important. And then on Friday, we have retail sales. So I would expect that all of this gets resolved and we would likely be heading in that minor fifth wave down. Um, coming into expiration or right after, during expiration or what, I think between now and by the time we get these figures, you can tell that they're sitting and waiting and then the confusion, but we get a little bit of a D wave, maybe down below, we come back up in the in a E wave and then we just should just die. So this could even get tighter and that's why I'm gonna leave that right there. All right, so for tomorrow, we'll wait for that CPI number, act accordingly. And our next update will be on Wednesday, July the 13th.